Borneo Kilimanjaro is an amazing travel destination. Its cultures, its forest, its wildlife and industries. You should really come here and see this place also. Join me as I show you some of the hidden treasures of Borneo Kilimanjaro. This is Kilimanjaro and welcome. Hi and welcome. Today we're here in central Kilimanjaro talking about the animals. Can you introduce yourself to us and tell us about the animals here? Hi, my name is Yun. I'm a social entrepreneur in Palangkaraya, Central Kalimantan, and also I have my social enterprise, Central Ponyo Guide. Well, I can tell you, it's a lot of animals in Central Kalimantan. Well, we have beautiful primates, actually, in Central Kalimantan, um, especially for orangutan, because orangutan is really popular in the world, right? It just only exists in Borneo Island and Sumatra Island, so we are in the special area. But you know what, like beside of orangutan, we have another primates that are actually really, really good and interesting to see. So I hope you can visit here to see them directly. We have proboscis monkey. It has long nose and it can swim in the river because their fingers like a duck. They climb it and then they, they also swim. And it's really, really good experience to see them in the forest. And also we have long tail macaques. It's like kind of monkey, but it's really smaller rather than monkey that you see in the forest, like usually. And it has long tail. They're living in a group, but sometimes this monkey always stealing orangutan food in the jungle. So it's kind of funny, like you see uh, all primates like living together in the forest and then some of the monkeys stealing your food and then sometimes they they are like, living together and be friends something like that so it's really interesting to see them like that and we have a gibbon so gibbon is really really beautiful singer like they they wake up about 5 a.m and then they start to sing wow. like ooh, ooh, something like that it's really beautiful sounds like it's like a, like a waking up like alert, like we have to wake up and see them. But it's really hard to find them, but you can hear their sounds. It's everywhere in the forest. It's really beautiful. So if someone wanted to hear that, they could come here and possibly get the chance yes, to? Yes, yeah. Wow. It's really, really, wow. I think Gibbon is really a special one because they, they can communicate with each other with sounds. It's really interesting, right? Because uh, orangutan is not like that. Orangutan just like almost keep silent. Just any action that they, they scream or something like that, but keep on always singing. So that's why Gibbon is really special. Yeah. And um, we have another one, red langur. So red langur is like a monkey, but the color is red. So sometimes you cannot recognize between the baby orangutans and then red langur. But you can see the difference is red langur has a tail and the baby orangutan is not. Wow. It's almost the same because the color like like brown bright like the orangutan. So it's it's really good to see them in here actually. That's primates like really really exist in Central Kalimantan that I have experienced in my eye and I was like amazing to see them. Wow. So this why I yeah, well, you know, like, I'd be a tour guide because I really love the primates in Central Kalimantan. What about the tarsers? Do you see tarsers sometimes? Ah, yeah, in the night. Mm -hmm. If you like jungle trekking in the night, you will see one of them. If someone didn't know what a tarsier was, could you tell us a little bit about a tarsier? Well, it's really rare because the population is not many in here, mm -hmm. sadly, because tarsi is one of the endangered animals. It's, you know, like it depends on you, like the weather is good and then you will do a jungle trekking and then you will see them because those eyes, the tarsier eyes is really big and you can recognize it. Yeah, and it's really small, like, like you know, like long tail macaque, but different because they have big eyes. So if someone came, they wouldn't be guaranteed to see all the animals, but maybe they could see a few and learn about them. Yes, yeah. Wow, it sounds like a great trip. Yeah, yeah. So we have some of the national park that you can visit, actually. 
Tanjung Puting National Park, Sebangun National Park, and Bukit Raya, Bukit Bakan National Park. So Bukit Raya, Bukit Bakan National Park is bordered between Central Kalimantan and West Kalimantan. So the location in Highland. So if you want to see orangutan a lot, I suggest you to come to Tanjung Puting National Park because if you know about Dr. Birute Galdikas, she is a founding orangutan for the first time in Kalimantan and also it's really popular because of her and Sebangun National Park you can see some of the animals like similar in Tanjuputing like orangutan, proboscis monkey and also the special is clouded leopard. Clouded leopard is really really um, beautiful creature I can say because it's really rare endangered animals and I can you know like not many people can see them, but it is potential to see them in Sebangun National Park because some of the local people see them and then some of them in the night can come to their camps and then explore to find some of the food maybe because their activity in the nocturnal. And beside of that, you will see some of the animal in Bukit Raya, Bukit Baka, it's like a sun bear because you know like Bukit Baka in the highland and a lot of population is a sun bear so sun bear in Kalimantan is the one of smallest bear wow yes because if you see another bears in another country maybe it's big one and then you know like bigger than us like two times maybe three times but you know sun bears in central Kalimantan is quite small so that's why a lot of people say that it's the smallest bear in the world but it is danger <laughs> as well in the world wow what yeah. does it do why is it dangerous oh because they are omnivore they can eat everything and sometimes if you go to the jungle in the highland uh, they can you know like <laughs> like hug you and then like wow, bite so you or they something can scratch like you or bite yes, you yes. wow so it's best to look at them from a distance. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. It is better because you cannot make them like, a, you know, orangutan can be habituate, right? Habituate and then we can rehabilitation or something like that. But sun bear is different treatment, you know, because they're really, really living in the white life. And then you cannot habituate easy for them. So it's really what? So a sun bear looks like a dog, but it's not a dog. Yes. To stay yes. back from. Stay back. Yeah. yeah. Stay back Great. from them. What else yeah. can you tell us about? Well, sun bear, actually, not many research about sun bear in here, actually, sadly. But I'm looking for another opportunity to see them. And then I see that BOSF, Borneo Orangutan Survival Foundation, they make a rehabilitation for sun bear, which is good because some of their land also loses because of humans so they they rehabilitate them to i don't know like in arboretum so boss has arboretum so rehabilitate orangutans and also sun bears that's what i know so far but i'm looking for it more than that that's interesting yeah but well, we all hope sun bears can do better in the future yes yes because yeah. it's in danger and it's great um, people care about them yeah yeah, I think what I talk about the animal is really vulnerable based on IUCN. The status is vulnerable and endangered animal. So it's really sad, you know, in the reality, but we have to preserve them and we have to protect them right now. So that's what I'm doing right now in my own perspective. Great. Yes. And I think by bringing tourists here to see them protects them also yes. because it gives them a value. Yes, and right. when they have a value, people will protect them, so um, other people will come and see them. Yes, and also education, yeah. right? To educate people to get to know more animals in the world, like especially in Borneo Island, in Santa Kalimantan. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, what else can you tell us about the animals? Well, sometimes you will see some snakes. The popular is pit viper. Wow. <laughs> because they're laying in the branch, sometimes you cannot recognize them. But be careful because it's, you know, like venom as well. What does it look like? Ah, it's a green color. It's like a, you know, like leaf. The color is similar. Sometimes you cannot recognize them. Wow. So they're laying in the branch. 
if you like pass in the jungle and then you 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 don't see them and then they feel threatened they then they are not really aggressive i can say it but when they feel threatened they will bite you like sh like jump to you and bite you because a lot of experience with my some of the my guests they cannot recognize and then it almost bite by them but luckily we have you know standard operational protocol while we are in the jungle so it's safe yeah luckily wow so someone should know what a pit viper looks like yeah Good. what else can you tell us is there cobras here there is a cobra as well but not man not many like pit viper oh, okay yes cobra you can find them a lot in subango national park and also python oh my god python in here is really big and long Wow. Especially in Subangon National Park because Subangon National Park is really three times larger than the other national park in Central Kalimantan. So you can check it because, you know, National Park, Subangon National Park is a, almost 90% is a pit swamps. It's wet. When you are in the jungle, it's flat, but it's wet. A lot of mosquito. So don't forget to bring mosquito repellent to go there. I understand from my own travels here, there's a lot of beautiful birds. Can yes. you tell us about the birds? Uh, maybe I can expect one of them. Okay, it's great. It's a really popular one. It is hornbill. Wow. So hornbill is really sacred for Dayak people because hornbill is really special here. So hornbill is a seed dispenser. You know, like it's A seed excellent. dispenser. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. And when they eat and then they throw the seed, and then it will grow in the forest and be a tree. Wow. Because there is a nutrient after they eat the seeds and then, you know, like they throw it up and then it will grow. It's really special. I've heard the same with the orangutans, that the it's orangutans are yes. farmers of the forest. Yes, yeah. yes, it's similar. Um, especially for the bird, like hornbill, because why it is sacred uh, for the people rather than, you know, orangutan, because hornbill living together in a couple but if one of them die, the other one will die. So, wow. in, because I am a dyad, so we believe that we live long lasting with our couple, like living together like family. So that's why Harmbil is a secretary than orangutan. But orangutan is the important as well because they are seed dispenser as well. Because after they eat the seed, because you know, orangutan can eat everything. They eat like seed, they eat fruit, they eat some of the small animals, like maybe ants, mosquitoes, or something like that, and then they throw it up. And the seeds that they eat, it will grow easily because wow. there is a nutrient uh, in their bodies. And then it's really, you know, like or orangutan. Because of that, orangutan is really important to protect. So that's my opinion, actually. That's really interesting. I know that um, from other traveling to other parts of the world, like mm -hmm. for South America, the macaw bird, when its partner dies, mm -hmm. it will fly up into the air and close its wings mm -hmm. and then fly down into the ground yeah, and kill like, itself. Yeah, like suicide. Yes, yeah, yeah. Does, a, does a hornbill do that also? Yes, it's similar. They, they don't want to eat. They don't want to do anything. Just kill by themselves, by itself. Wow. So that's why the population is really, really small because of that. Wow. So be, be careful for people hunting, you know, sometimes. It's illegal in Indonesia actually, like hunt some of the birds and then they kill one of the birds like hornbill and then the, the, the partner will feel depressed and they don't want to eat, they don't want to do anything and then kill by itself. So. Wow. So when they kill one bird, they actually kill two yes. birds. Yeah. I understand from my own travels here that there's a lot of people go on boat trips. Mm -hmm. And when you're on boat trips, you can see the fishermen. And the yeah. fishermen are catching all kinds of different fish that I've never mm -hmm. seen before. And I know also that there's very unique things that live in the water here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, we have a lot of fish actually in Central Kalimantan because we have a lot of rivers, absolutely. And yeah, we have special fish like snack hats. We have huge, type of snake hats. Maybe I can explain some of them. We have Karanda, we have Haruan, we have Chani. So Chani is a, it's a one of snake hats, it's expensive one. So people, if they get 
Chani fish they sell to the other people with a million of rupiah. I don't know why, but the reason because of they are so beautiful. They don't want to eat Chani, but they want to sell because the fish is really beautiful. Wow, so they collect them and put them yes, in an aquarium. Yeah. Wow, that's So neat. it's it's Chani and then Haruan and Karamba. So actually, um, we, our local people, believe that if we eat snackhead, it also contains some vitamins that benefit for human, especially if you are, um, like after surgery, it's easy to heal your, your surgery with snackheads. So that's we believe. And then also the local doctor in here, so uh, giving us recommendation to eat a lot of snackheads to heal our surgery or to heal our some of the like heart chronic disease and then we had diabetics problem as well. So it's wow. really benefit for us in here. So that's why snack hats everywhere in this river. Yeah, and don't forget about crocodile though. <laughs> so we have a lot of crocodile, especially in Tanjung Puting. You will see them spot directly on your houseboat in Tanjung Puting National Parks because the population in Tanjung Puting is really a lot. So don't dare to use small canoe in the Tanjung Puting National Park. It is better to use like like the medium size of the boat, like houseboat for tourists. It is great to see them and then you can see like beautiful spot if you want to take photo as well of the crocodiles. But some of the crocodiles are very big, aren't they? It is big and it yeah. is small, yeah. And very smart animals. Really small. <laughs> Yeah. So be careful with crocodiles because they are really aggressive. Well, that's yeah. great. Thank you for telling us about the animals of Central yes, Kilimanjaro. You're welcome. Terima kasih. Terima kasih We're doing this for all of you. If you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment below. See you next time.